Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Victory at Sea Pacific episode number 23. So we're at the conclusion of this last battle. In fact, this is where I saved and loaded back in. The Chester took some minor damage. Uh, we can actually view the damage report um, of these ships if we go into the fleet screen. So unfortunately the hubby, the Chandler, have given their... sacrificed themselves nobly for the... for the cause. Um, we can see if any of these down here are damaged. System damage, unable to perform. Ah, so let's just activate repairs. Let's prioritize repairs on this ship since we do want to repair all the damaged stuff. Um, and somebody was telling me that the prioritized gain experience is the best. It is the, the battle. So I, I just noticed only now that this <laughs> is the same as this, which means I guess Man all the stations you can. No, nobody off of, of duty. So we'll go ahead and uh, repair all the damage we can here. Um, I don't think this is an, an effect unless it's red. I don't know. Because it looks like it's green actually. But, but yeah, the ship did take a, a little bit of damage here. Um, and where does this put us at? Well means we need to give, uh, we probably just need to babysit Task Force 22 to make sure she gets home. And there's been some comments as well, I mean some repeated urgent uh, requests I would say, that I build enough um, cargo ships. So right now we have this group going on over here, these Liberties and the, um, the oil tankers. And I just realized, I don't know why I missed this before, that we only have a build queue of uh, six spots available. Which means that five of these ships are not being built right now. Now, five, uh, three of these will finish before the oil tankers, which means three of them will start early. I'm going to go ahead and allow those three, but that means that the fourth and the fifth, uh, we are going to, to axe. So our convoys will end up being three and six. I wanted more Liberty class cargo ships, but we won't be able to do that just because the nature of this <laughs> building system. And what I'll do instead is, as people keep reminding me that this is actually really important, uh, I'm going to go ahead and queue up another set of three, and we'll get two started here. And as soon as I can, I'll build a third one, and that should be pretty quickly. Uh, another thing, I read the comments from 21, also from 22 at this point, and we can see that down here somewhere, oh my god, the massacre at Aleutian Islands, these are our logs. So Task Force 19 spotted an enemy near uh, the North Pacific head and southeast, the enemy fleet, well anyways, it's right here. Uh, the enemy fleet consists of two cruisers and one light cruiser, Task Force 19 came under, under fire and responded in kind, seeking the Ashigara. Uh, well, we didn't just sink that, we sank, um, well, this is, so this is actually not the one I want. I want, is it this one? Task Force 22, okay, this is it. So, uh, around dawn, this is the battle I missed. Around dawn, we lost the grid leaf from this, but it's completely okay considering. Um, around dawn on the, on the Thursday, on Thursday, 12th March 1942, Task Force 22 spotted an enemy near the North Pacific heading northeast. The enemy fleet considers, consisted of two destroyers and two light cruisers. Task Force 22 came under fire and responded in kind, sinking the Tatsuta. The resulting battle was decisive victory for our naval forces, resulting in the sinking of four enemy vessels, and our fleet sustained minor damage. In all, Task Force 22 launched 28 torpedoes and fired 471 rounds, as one would expect with such overwhelming odds in our favor. Task Force 22 struck a decisive blow to the enemy, suffering minor damage in return. So that was the uh, action that I missed. <clears throat> and uh, I think what happens is if you don't give the fleet, if they're in a battle screen, if you don't give them orders in the tactical screen, if you only give them orders on the strategic map, um, what's gonna happen is they, oh, actually this log is actually more, more useful than I thought. It gives you the what you've unlocked. So that's, that's quite nice. Um, 
So they'll, they'll continue to actually fight. They'll go, they'll turn towards the enemy, they'll engage as effectively as they can. So it's just something to note. I would not consider this a game bug at all. I would like it if there were a disengage option, if you were able to give a disengage option from the strategic map. I don't think that that's how it works though, or at least that's how I'm judging or guessing it it, it works or doesn't work. <laughs> anyway, we're re this was originally not, I don't think intended to go to Terawa, but I think I told it to go here. So that's great. Um, I may even, I was even considering detaching the two, are these Clemsons? I believe that they are, yeah. I was even considering detaching the Clemsons. Uh, my thoughts on it are, uh, this is big enough, I'll let them keep going with this fleet. And once you detach them, you can't put them back, as far as I know. You can only assign them to escort. But the problem is, I think that they, I don't know. I, I'd be worried about the Clemsons running out of range. Um, they don't have the, the greatest endurance, the greatest range before running out of fuel. Okay, so let's just unpause and keep going. What the what is the all eyes are on the situation developing in uh, north of Midway? What would we consider this? The northern North Pacific Ocean, <laughs> but just south of the Aleutian Islands, we have this uh, these two trains on a collision course, and they're heading on the same track. So Atu is actually a victory condition for the Japanese, um, <clears throat> and right now they actually hold a, a fair number of these victory conditions. Okay, so there's so many different things bouncing in my head. I know I want to secure Marshall Islands. We have the surface action group moving out. That's good. Wait, are the surface ship? Are they deploying? <gasps> Wonderful, they're deploying their own planes. Fantastic, I'm very happy to see that. Okay, so Task Force 19, they are being tasked to, yeah, go back and repair Johnson Island. Just very unfortunate that we did lose those two destroyers. Pretty devastating pretty devastatingly accurate fire. Um, that's just been one of the things I've <clears throat> mentioned several times though, that the fire in this game does appear to be a little bit too accurate. Now knowing that we can get a replenishment, let's go ahead and route towards Terawa because we're about to get a delivery to Terawa. And the most important thing will be ammunition, which this, is, this should have plenty of, right? 3,000 shells, 4,000 fuel, lots of stuff. So we, if we can, so long as we can hold all that in the stores here should be good and we'll also want to upgrade this is a good point somebody mentioned that this is still on mid and it's probably become a high priority because I mean all of our <laughs> replenishment will now take place in Marshall Islands we still want to invade the Wake Island but we're gonna need some kind of cruiser task force I'm looking at you guys right here <laughs> I guess I'm looking at somebody else since they need to go back and repair and rearm um, is it possible? How long? How many days until this is? No, 13 days. Well, it's probably going to take longer than 13 days. My goodness. We're still at too slow of a speed. Okay. So All Eyes is really still here. That's what I need to make sure I'm paying attention to, that we don't get into a bad situation. In fact, let me make sure that they, they might actually be coming into range soon. My goodness. Kind of. Okay, we spotted the enemy vessels. Great. These were the ones that were pursuing Task Force 22. Apparently they broke off, and it looks like they're routing towards Task Force 19, who at this point doesn't really want a piece of them. Three cruisers versus three cruisers. So <laughs> Now with the two destroyers there, I don't think Sub-4, the Albacore, wants um, any of that action either. Hmm. And I think the best thing for our subs is just to act as spotters, like big spotters. Um, <clears throat> Alright, let me take care of these messages down here, Task Force Bravo. So I, I don't really understand, so I think somebody was asking why does Task Force 31, why are they having such a problem? Why are these in such a bad way? really don't understand it. Their morale is just absolutely horrible. Let's go ahead and take off anything that we can. Let's put advanced radar on. Uh, let's turn down catapults. I don't care about the launch cooldown. I don't care about the damage. Uh, engine will keep on. Fire control, we don't care about that. Flight crew, don't care about this either. Uh, fuel system, yes, we care about that. So now the morale is going to go up by plus one a day. We're at like pretty much the minimum, which is not good. 
a little bit surprising to me that the like we don't have like any crew working on this thing why are so many people upset it, it's actually a good question <laughs> like what's going on here uh, engineering is the way I think we can just suck so many people away from engineering fire control flight crew yeah where what the heck's going on here I guess we don't expect to take casualties we can drop that down by a little bit we do want to keep the mess this is the one where you always want to it, it adds more morale <laughs> the only thing you'd want to do is take this off during battle to give you enough crew to go somewhere else well, this is plus two a day. I guess we're going to have to settle with that. It just makes me think that there's not enough crew on this thing or something. Like, do we have... Are we, like, out of crew somehow? Or where... <laughs> what, what's going on on this? I, it's actually a good question. Anyway, so the, uh, CTF Bravo has been... Uh, da, 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 is ready to go. And this is another one where it's a little bit weird. The morale is just terrible on this okay so let's put them to everyone prioritizing this is barely an, even increasing uh, considering they're docked what oh yeah the point is that we're waiting for task force 17 to catch up right yeah task force 17 is here actually I mean they're these guys are gonna go over to Wake Island I've, I'm gonna commit to this now <clears throat> because it'll give these guys a little bit more time uh, by that I mean it'll give the Enterprise and so, and her group a little bit more time to like just decrew completely so they don't need advanced radar I'm assuming that my I have radar built into everything so just drop everything down to like nothing and then we'll give them an order to do the only thing we want to make sure we do is keep mess on which is good I don't think anything else is needed and stores okay those are the two we wanted forget about that and do the same thing how much which was the morale five morale a day yeah that's that's I don't want to manage these things on camera I really don't I feel bad I, I don't know what else to do though but I mean I need them somewhat <laughs> operational <laughs> Da, da, flight crew system, we don't need that either. We're not moving anywhere. Mess, navigation, and everything else stores, good. Turbines don't care. So even turning these guys to happy face would increase their functionality at this point. <laughs> Let's just turn everything off. There we go. This is we're getting the good stuff now. I'm getting a little bit faster at this. It makes me nervous to decrease the fuel, though, because I'm still worried that it has some effect. Should I have engines or something? Subhunter. Hmm. Well, we'll leave the subhunter uh, on. I don't know why, but just in case. Okay. Good. Very good. So that's going to keep those guys uh, in a little bit better shape. And when we need them to break out, we'll just we'll do so. All right, so how are things going? Now, uh, again, we can return our attention up here. Uh, kind of a question, how is the morale here? So let's prepare them for combat by letting them take a quick break. We don't need them to be doing anything for the moment because we already know where our enemy is. We don't need them to be scouting. I mean, I guess the only thing we can do is with the Conquered, maybe launch, uh, make sure that we're not being detected by anything else. So launch one reconnaissance flight forward. Yep. All right. And what it, did I end up solving this problem? I think I did. And 32 was ready to go, but it's not really ready to go because we're waiting for um, her. She's going to be escorting the Yorktown. That's going to be another 18 days. Quite a long time, but I don't want the Yorktown making that trip unless I decide to buy a destroyer here and I do I think I do need some more destroyers <laughs> we're starting to run a little bit low I don't think I'll get a Clemson though actually Clemson's are even okay for for what we need but the next one would be a Gridley it would cost 50 
Let's pause real fast and see what the Clemson's upgrade is. So it's 10 for Radar and Sub Hunter. We do want that, so it's 45 versus, we can't even buy this, so I can't see the upgrade, okay. Well, that's a good reason to save enough money to buy an upgrade, and actually, as soon as we have 50, that's supposed to go to the Puget Sound construction uh, to get another merchant ship being built. Hmm. Okay, let's return this guy before he, yeah, exactly, gets shot at. <laughs> we, these guys have all satisfied their requirements. Really, we don't, we can have all of them return. The only thing we really wanted was to find this exact fleet. So let's get this guy to go over here. I'm going to risk the ASW to see if it is a big thing. So this will be an experiment. Unfortunately, the experiment is with the Albacore's life, but we'll find out very soon if that's uh, if it's a really a thing that the ASW will just make a, a meal out of my submarines or not. Okay, back up to 25x. So after the last episode, I like those. I don't know. Every now and then, it, it, this game continues to show its its real the real glory of it, the real beauty of it. it's it's very impressive. Yeah, and actually, okay. So suddenly, I'm like really thinking how we absolutely we need to take Wake Island. I'm gonna reroute. I want to amphibiously invade this as soon as possible. These guys do have ordnance. They do have some weaponry especially the Northampton and they may be without destroyers but yeah at least we have some submarines nearby the only thing I'm worried about of course is that they run into some enemy submarines so we hope that that isn't uh, doesn't end up being the case these cruisers I don't know what they're doing they're heading into the, the mob void <laughs> down over into the Bismarck Sea it's rather daring Okay, we didn't find anything in our little reconnaissance mission here. Oh wait, this one, who I haven't actually launched. Okay, let's get this guy not to auto launch and have this one, where are you? Oh, it is returning. Let's get a B-24 out of here. I know it's probably just gonna be a, whoops, that's not a B-24. Uh, I know it's gonna be kind of probably just a waste, but let's fly another mission, see if we can wind up getting any damage. We were able to drop a few bombs on one of the, the carriers. Somebody made a comment that it's possible the carrier task force was able to resupply its aircraft at Komodorsky. I hope not. I mean, I, I certainly hope not. I, I doubt it's... Okay, I guess it's possible. Makes me a bit nervous. <laughs> so let's try this. Let's swap them out. Let's get the B-24. Fly her mission, something like this. This will also be a measure of how well that they respond, um, these carriers. It keeps them on their feet, right? They're going to have to go to battle conditions, and that's going to force them to uh, deplete their crew a little bit while we're kind of conserving our crew. These should be gaining morale. Yeah, gaining a lot of morale. Good, very good. That's all, everything I want to see. And now, because we went into and out of the screen, we're back down to the Marshall Islands. I don't know how I can get the map to stay on the thing I click on. Maybe when I come out I can double click over here and it'll go to them. I don't know. Anyways, we're seeing over here the red faces are turning less red, <laughs> which is good. Bravo's hopefully a little bit better off. Where's her? Yeah, so she has a little bit of time because what we can do is just meet a little bit out here even. We don't have to meet directly here. Considering Jocelyn, I mean, look at all this aircraft. There's nothing that can be getting through in this area. There's so many scout aircraft flying around. So that's good. I mean, at least Midway, Johnston Island, this whole... I mean, Pearl Harbor itself is rather safe, I, would, I feel like. Although I do want to encourage probably a couple more... Um, so what do we have here? We have a Helldiver with mixed with a bunch of Dauntless. What I want is actually some more scout air, aircraft. Let's take out one of our... Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to take out one of my Dauntlesses. I think I'm just going to take out the Helldivers. We'll save the Helldivers for the... Uh, well, now we don't have any... Yeah, now we don't have any fighters. 
That's fine. I'm actually going to leave it that way. It doesn't... Wait. Upgrade all fights. What? Upgrade all flights? I, I don't know what that means. I'm very nervous to press that button. It's 135 war bonds, which I don't have, first of all, but... Oh, we have a Dauntless, which is injured. Okay, so... I wonder how long it'll take to repair these. I think the repair damage has been modified slightly through the course of... Oh, gosh! Okay, so I think that... Uh, okay, how do I do this? I need to get this guy into the way up. So I think we're going to have to go to the tactical map for this. Mm -hmm. There they are. Alright, good. So they are way up in the sky, which is great. And there's the enemy fleet. Fantastic. Give the movement order from here. Oh god, an ant. This is less important. This uh, campaign is less important than the ant which has suddenly emerged on my desk. It's been raining around here, so you know what that what happens with that it brings in the ants. Really the the least invasive creature that invades. <laughs> it just, don't really bother anybody. <laughs> All right, so we have a spotter from CTF Able. Wow, that's interesting that they're they are automatically launching them. Okay, that's nice. I I think that this has been fixed or patched or something because they didn't used to do this. Anyway, we have our level bomber coming at night, which is ideal, and it's going to help us keep tabs. And what do you know? We're in range. Okay, how do we do this? We're not quite in range with our fighters, and that's the important difference. So what I want to do is... Okay. I'm just going to pretend that this B-24 has radar, uh, radio and can transmit. That's really a long distance. I'm not sure it could actually get that far, but... Um, they see it. We see a spotter coming kind of in our general direction. Let's shift a little bit south by southwest. I mean, really what we want to do is not do that though. We really want to, we really want to shift east. I want to move towards the Aleutian Islands because I, I want the support of the Aleutian Islands if I need it. Kind of like the same way that Midway was supported by the Midway uh, Air Force. Ah, this is exciting. I mean, this is already... The drama is starting. Um, do we launch? This is a huge decision. Do we launch without the ability to, to completely escort our aircraft? Okay, I think I'm going to give the order. I think we're going to move east and we're going to launch. So, we're going to wait for this bomber to relay what the, what the fighter response is to their incursion. Kind of a suicidal attempt because... <laughs> Fighters in this game can are, are quite good at <laughs> catching. I think that they might be even, if I'm not mistaken, this is actually them turning north to launch fighters uh, as they see my level bomber on approach. Which is pretty interesting. So the main thing I want to do is get a big um, fighter screen up to, to precede my dive bombers. And I mean, we're really inching into it. This is like midway type action happening. Oh man, it is great to see all these, that this has been changed. They're actually launching their combat aircraft. It's wonderful. I don't have to control it anymore. Ah, it's fantastic. And these guys have like almost no combat aircraft left to launch, so. Anyways, we can see Terwa should now be, oh, it is, it is. And these guys are going to return to Hawaii where they pick up new supplies. Yeah, this is wonderful. The supply system is working perfectly. I'm Like I, I keep mentioning this, the game is in constant development. So things are getting better as we continue to, you know, we're playing the game, the series is moving forward, and even in that time span, the game is improving. All right, but anyways, we have this bomber. I'm going to speed up time a little bit.
We should be getting pretty close. It's midnight, just after, 1 o'clock now. Good time to approach. Okay, let's move into the action here and see what we see. Now our visibility will not be very good either, of course, because it's, you know, middle of the night. So we might have a hard time hitting a ship here. I'm just gonna wait and circle, I'm gonna like, basically do a drive-by, pick out a target, and then we'll drop bombs on anything which we can. I'm gonna try not to use uh, the slowdown of time too much in order to help me in bombing myself. I could just let the B-24 bomb on her own, but I'm pretty sure that she would be very ineffective at that. <laughs> at least my experiences, they don't usually hit. Be kind of cool to take out the battle cruiser too. So we're seeing absolutely nothing. We're gonna drop down and see if we can get a better look. Especially knowing that, uh, as we do outside of the game, knowing that this bomber flight is actually toast. <laughs> There's no way that they're gonna survive this. Okay, so we see a destroyer. That's all we see. Let's move this way. Okay, we got something. We got the Soryu. Ah! Which we've already hit. Okay, now we got everything. So it looks like you have to be below 8,000 to really detect these things. So let's see if we can get down to a little bit lower. And we'll try to drop on the Kaga this time, or should we go for the Shikaku? Let's see what's going to happen. This one's moving. The zeros are being deployed, so we don't have much time. Let's drop on the Shikaku and then just get out of here. Uh, we want to... Oh boy, this is actually tough because we want to fly in line with them. And in that case, the Kaga is the best bet. And we do, it looks like we're going to have enough time to, to react, though. I mean, to line up our shots. They're climbing. We got, we got some time still. Okay, let's see how this looks. All right, line it up. Hold her steady. I, I think it's actually, when you're diving, I think the bombs don't aren't quite that accurate, so we're gonna move back this way. Still a little bit more time, a little bit more time. And now let's go back for the Kaga. Okay, is she dead in the water? I don't know, we don't have time. We're just gonna go for it. All right, go, go home. Here they come. That is way up there. Uh, is she not moving? Should have aimed for a destroyer. <laughs> Going home. Here comes her bombs. And she's gonna be engaged soon, so the last thing she's gonna get on out on her radio is Oh man, that looks good. Holy cow. Oh my gosh. That she sank a, an aircraft carrier. I did not expect that. <laughs> wow. Alright, I'm going to have to write a house rule that unless we get overwhelmed by carriers and it's really an emergency, I have to stop doing the level bombing myself. Because <laughs> if they're not moving, that takes the fun out of it too. Like if I have to lead the target and all that, that's exciting. But, new house rule. Anyways, we're up against one less carrier. I don't think it's going to change the result of things too much, frankly, but uh, it'll be a little bit l less satisfying. And we're still a little bit off from the distance we need to be at to launch our fighters. <clears throat> we know that our uh, B-24 is not going to make it home. So was, I'm not going to add, I was. Gonna, I mean, I'll put a fighter here. Nah, I won't even do that. 
Anyways, that's given us enough war bonds that we can do a couple of things. One, we can build the extra liberty that I wanted to build here. So that's six out of six. We have 130, so we can take a look at the uh, destroyers available. Especially if one of them can build fast enough in 16 days. I think that is possible. Yeah, nine days for the Clemson. All right, so let's take a look at the Gridley then. This is a very fast one, has only one depth charge versus two. But the port, the porter itself only has one. This has 16, it's four by five, eight by five. So this must have the double guns. Uh, all right, let's just see both of these side by side. Uh, advanced radar and sub hunter for 20, so that's 70 total. Versus advanced radar, three, okay, for five extra you get three AAA, which is, in my opinion, much better. We do, you have more guns, you have less depth charges, but, oh, I mean, the depth, the depth charge situation is about the same. So the Gridley just seems like a really fast variant, um, which we don't, I mean, we don't really need that. 37 is already amazing, so I don't really see a point to building more Gridleys. And especially because this is going to be escorting a, a carrier, <clears throat> There's only one way of doing it, and in my opinion, that is to get the porter and do the upgrade. And since this takes 13 days to build, we even have a couple more days before we need to do it. You know what, we'll just do it now because by the time we need to um, build anything else, we're going to have this carrier fight, and that's going to give us, I'm sure, a few extra war bonds. So we'll build another destroyer leader, and we'll give it the upgrade, and we'll let that build, and that should finish... Yeah, just in time for the Yorktown. So we'll have the Atlanta, the Yorktown, and the Porter make uh, the voyage out west. And really what we ought to be doing is getting some more carriers as well. But Okay, so let's unpause. And if you think about the war bonds, I just, I don't know why I didn't think about this before, but the war bonds for an aircraft right there are kind of insane. You know, you can they are saying that you can, for one B-24, you can build a Clemson. I'm pretty sure that the cost of a Clemson is multiple, maybe even a, a whole squadron of B-17s, B-30, B-24s, anything like that. So. Alright, so this plane is now destroyed. We'll swap it out. And, like I said, we, we could add a fighter there, but I'm not going to because we'll just let them do their thing. And we'll allow you to auto-launch now. Just return to normal. Situation normal, basically. Alright. Let's see, are you guys moving now? You are, but it's just not very fast because you're a very slow group of cruisers. Uh, there have been a lot of comments as well talking about how the Japanese, actually this was a discussion we had on my Discord, about how the Japanese, they just simply had less, um, they, they simply had faster ships. That was a thing, a thing that the Imperial Japanese Navy focused on. And um, there was a lot of re repercussions to that. They had less... I mean, they were not as good at taking hits. Um, other comments I saw, I, I'm not even sure which ones were related, or maybe they're all tied to the, the speed in some some manner, just because different, you know, you change the boiler or whatever, you change <laughs> the, the speed. So they had a, a lighter, I think a smaller boiler. They, they weren't built for as long of endurance, long range, so they could be a little bit faster. Things like this. So that explains why my Northamptons, which are the slowest of the cruisers modeled in this game for me anyway, are, uh, are going to have a hard time catching up with anything on the Japanese side. Okay, so we've... We still have a, a heavy cruiser, battle cruiser, two carriers. Well, we just got to focus on the carriers first. After that, everything is icing on the cake. But it was nice to get the one carrier down. Uh, look at him. We'd have great celebrations for this Liberator pilot who daringly um, penetrated the Japanese area. I mean, they're obviously not using radar of any kind, so... I think we can say that they're going to be in range by the time I launch. I mean, by the time we get over there, we should be in range. And we can also move towards... I mean, ah, I don't know. It's tough to say. What? Oh, had a little bit of lag there for a, for a second. 
but I do want to start capturing ports back. It's been too long. We're wasting our like um, ability to to actually capture. Let's go capture anything at this point. <laughs> but I, I, if I can, if I can choose, it would be Wake Island. I think I'm going to stop launching. Let's recall all flights. <laughs> and I'm going to ask them to stop launching um, aircraft because I do not want to give away our presence. We already know where they are. So let's prepare for the big launch. They're in range. Okay. And that's the perfect place to call this video to a close. So we will prepare, launch and attack the enemy carrier task force in the next episode. So I'm already looking forward to that. It's actually painful. This is a cliffhanger not just for you, but for me as well, because I have to wait until the next time I have this much time to record <laughs> to be able to get out there and do it. Oh, wait, what are you doing? Are you launching after I just forbid you to launch? Don't do that. Okay, do not allow. Oh, no, 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 no. Back you go. Do not give us away. Damn it. This one already gave us away. All right, fine. Well, we're going to launch. I'm going to slow down this video now. Slow down the time, pause, and we'll launch. We'll stop here. So I guess I can't stop them from launching these. Seems weird that I don't have the ability to stop you. Can you? Like, how do I... Uh, I don't know. This is combat aircraft, so I guess it's a little bit different. All right, anyways, so we'll hopefully figure out what the spotter planes are doing before the next one. Probably won't be until after the next episode. Might have to look it up or ask for people in the comments to tell me what to do. But until the next episode, thanks for watching, and take care.